as a messenger of God, which is the Islamic testification. He doesn't go around in Jerusalem or Bethlehem or Galilee saying, I am God, messenger of God. This is the Islamic narrative. God, God is not like so the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He's just a man, no more, no less. He came with the same revelation, worship God alone. The one true God, the God of Abraham, the God of Moses, the God of Isaac, Ishmael, Jacob, Solomon, David, the one Jesus, the one true God. This is who we should worship. Now, we Muslims, we pray five times a day. We bow to God first, then we kneel in prostration. You must have seen the way Muslims pray. Did you know this is how the prophets in the Old Testament prayed? In the book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, verse 4 and 6, it tells you how to pray. They used to bow first and then kneel in prostration. Before they offered their prayers in the book of Deuteronomy, Moses would wash his hands, finish by washing his feet before he would offer congregational prayers, which is what we Muslims do. We've just done our third prayer. Before we'd probably do a mini wash, finish hand, hands, start with the hands, finish by the feet. We're praying towards God Almighty, the one true God. He's got no partners, no equals. This is the Islamic, and this is the message of all the prophets. They came with that one central message, worship Allah alone. Allah is the Arabic word for God. In the language Jesus spoke, do you know what language Jesus spoke? He spoke a language called Aramaic. You know this one? He spoke a language called Aramaic. He read the Bible, he read the Old Testament in Hebrew, but he spoke the language called Aramaic. In Aramaic, the word for God is Allah. In Arabic, it's Allah. In Hebrew, it's Ilah. Yahweh is just the title. Yeah. So let's just continue. So we pray for, so they, in the time of Moses, they would pray three times a day. Set times together, standing in congregation like Muslims do. So that's the prayer. Exact way that they prayed, we pray. Five, three times for the, for the people of uh, for Moses, and now we do five times a day. So what Islam claims to be is the completion of God's law. It's a universal message for all of mankind. Whereas the other scriptures, they were only for their people at that particular time. So in the New Testament, Jesus says, for example, I have come not to I um, go not to the uh, to the Gentiles. I have only come for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, meaning he only came for the Israelites. He expressly says, do not go to the Gentiles, the non-Jews, because he only came for a select people. Whereas the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a universal messenger who is known as Illa Rahmata Lil Alameen, the mercy for the whole world, with the one same message as the, all the other prophets, worship God alone. And Islam complements and completes that. Does that make sense? Like it starts to make sense, like step by step. Yeah. Excellent. Because Have you got any questions you'd like to ask? Like, um, about, um, just like, from this thing before, like, when you talk about the five, your five, uh, I'm going to say French five pillars. Five daily, yeah, five yeah. pillars, yes. So, what does it mean exactly, your five pillars? Because when I start speaking the floor, that's why I was speaking the one to speak the word. Like, so, the, yeah, so the five pillars are, number one, you testify there's only one God, God sends messengers, the final messenger is the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. That's the first pillar. It's called the Arabic, it's called the Shahada. The second, the other pillars are, you fast in the month of Ramadan. Yes? You give charity. 2.5% of your wealth for every Muslim is a responsibility for any wealth that you have, you have to give 2.5% of your savings to the poor and needy. So it's as important as offering the prayers. Okay, that's number. Then we must go once in a lifetime to a pilgrimage to Mecca, Saudi Arabia, once in a lifetime. The same pilgrimage that Hagar did with Ishmael when she couldn't find any water in the book of Genesis. Then we are, um, by that method, these, uh, the, the other ones were um, um, fast, so there's the shah yes. so there's shahada number one. There's fasting. There is um, giving charity. There is going for Hajj. 
and these are the f and there's one more so these are the fundamental pillars of islam which so the, the best way if you want to learn the Quran or learn how to about everything is these divine things, the five pillars. Yeah, they're the fundamentals of, of the religion, which make you a Muslim. Then the practice, in, in actual fact, the, the rep repetitive thing in Islam is the prayers. The fasting is only one month in the year. Yeah. Going on Hajj or the pilgrimage to Mecca is once in your lifetime as a responsibility to you, in your lifetime. The giving of charity. It's like once a year, 2.5% of your gross wealth. So these are the fundamentals that you have to do as a Muslim. But the repetitive thing is the prayers, which is done every day, five times a day. Why do we pray? We have to acknowledge our Creator. He's given us everything. And He's the only one worth... When I say He, it doesn't mean that He's a He. It's just a figure of speech in the Semitic languages. God is unlike His creation. That is the message of Jesus. Peace be upon him, Muhammad, peace be upon him, Abraham, peace be upon him, all the prophets. And one day we're going to die. We're not going to be here forever. And we are going to be we're going to be in our graves. We're going to be accountable for our when God raises everything. And then we will be accountable for our actions in this world. And we have to then live a life according to God's pleasure. It makes no sense whatsoever that he's created all of this without no purpose or a direction or a command on how he wants you to live he would want you for example let me ask, just say for example you have a mobile phone if i was to give this mobile phone to you and you've never seen a mobile phone in your life and i hand it to you what's the first thing you would ask with it pardon no, it's a mobile phone you can speak to somebody from one and from here to another part of the world but you've never operated it before you never used before what's the first thing you will ask i'm giving you a clue you will ask for a guide a manual how to operate it so the revelation that the quran is given as a guidance to mankind upon how one should lead one's life does that make sense so you do as god has commanded as ordained by him so you know so for example in the islamic narrative there are responsibilities in for men and women. They play different functional roles, but they are equal in the sight of God. Yeah. So in the sight of God, they are equal, but they play different functions, different roles. So in the Islamic narrative, the man has to go out and provide for the family. His everything is his responsibility. This is the commandments of God. The woman, just say for example, you have a nice business, at, online business at home. You have no responsibility whatsoever to contribute to the household. Everything you earn is for yourself. The responsibility for the maintenance is with the man. At the same, at the same juncture, your husband who comes and works for you, you have an obligation to be kind and loving to him. Who maintain your family with a good nice structured family method but he, you are not his servant <laughs> so, yeah, just like the respect, the respect, respect mutual respect yeah. so you have so your husband plays a prominent role you have to give him the position of the head but his responsibility then is to produce equity and fairness and treat you with how god has commanded to be treated with honor respect love the prophet muhammad upon whom be peace was the very best example to his wife so this is the message of islam you must obey the words of of your creator you must give a recognition you must be good charitable honest it's no good me pray five times a day and i'm cheating people in my business unfortunately lots of religious people do this i must say it's the truth, it's the truth. but this is not what god has commanded so we must be so the emptiness of the prayer will be if you do not perform the deeds of the prayer the actions making yourself better kind humble polite honest integral you know having integrity all these commonalities which we all have this is the message of islam in, in a nutshell and this is why i invite you to it's got the very best first and foremost it has the very best concept of god 
just say like we got a uh, respect, like love each other. That's something that we try to do. We think we could just teach you other people or like from other countries and other background to to be like the. Uh, it's complicated. For me, like it's complicated. Um, Where are you from? I'm from but originally from Gabon. Gabon, yes. So I don't know if it's from like I don't know. From, I still try to search my way to things like that because I don't know about everything about Christianity, but they don't help me at all, like for live and have a new life and be different than I used to before. You see, sister, this is this is a very much spreading between many people. On our table here, we've got people from different nationalities, Afro-Caribbean people who've become Muslims. We've got white English people who have become Muslims. We've got people of all different nationalities and races under that ubiquitous banner of Al-Islam. Allah says, beautiful verse, uh, beautiful narration, sorry, in the Hadiths. Allah does not judge you by your color or your creed, but by your piety and goodness. So Islam is ubiquitous, it's for everyone and it's encompassing. People are coming attracted towards it and many people are converting. I would encourage you to do the same thing as well. Become Muslim. Worship Allah alone is the one who's solely worthy of worship. We've got lots of information on the table there. Free Qurans in English, lots of free literature. Please help yourself if you would like, whatever you can. Can I take you over there? In French, I'll have to ask one of the brothers. It, it, it may be in, in, in a storage place. Maybe I can get that ordered oh, for you. Of course, let's come to the let's come over right. here. Inshallah. We don't know anything about our religion. Like, what is Islam? Like, what is Islam? Like, yeah. yeah, brilliant. I mean, again, uh, if you, I mean, everything I said, if it makes sense to you, yeah. then there's nothing stopping you becoming Muslim. It's straight. Maybe. No problem. What what you could do is tonight when you go home, sorry, the brothers here they've got YouTube channels. You, they will upload. Yeah, I'll give you. I'll give you their channels. We'll upload them, inshallah, and we'll be able. To, you can review and consider what we've discussed, and then you can welcome to, to come back next week, perhaps if you so wish. Okay. You every weekend. Every here, two thirty till about eight thirty. On, okay. uh, on Saturdays. Okay. Okay. Definitely, I'm gonna come back. If it's not next week, if you're still here, I'm gonna. No, we'll be here every week. It's no problem. Let me give you the details yeah. on the phone. This can be. Too, I'm just gonna speak in the camera for one moment, oh, yeah, sure. and then I will be with you. And I'm gonna so, this one in so a very nice sister here from um, uh, from France, who's ethnically from Gabon. Uh, late father, may Allah um, have mercy on him. Um, he's passed away, and he was a Muslim. Mother is Christian, but she's more inclined towards Islam, as we've heard the sister speak. So may Allah guide onto the right path and inshallah she will accept the religion. Assalamu alaikum.